When most of you think of an auction, you probably think of an antique auction or maybe a collector's auction, something like that. Or if you're classy like myself, you're thinking of storage wars. But today, we're going to be taking a look at the dealer auction, the place where car dealerships go to pick up some whips so that I can show you exactly how we buy our car. In today's video, we're going to be taking a first hand look at the dealer auction and how we go through the cars to see exactly the ones that we want to pick up. So we've got to keep this on the down low or I might get fired. Shh. Hurry up, let's get into it already. First and foremost, you need to understand what you need. For instance, if you're buying private, well, let's say a personal car, well, this section might not be for you. You might want to just skip ahead because I'm kind of just talking to the dealerships here. Find out what your customers want and of course, what they can afford. Let me give you an example. Here at Westland Auto Sales, we don't look for the Rolls Royces, the Bentleys, the Mercedes, anything like that because, well, they're just way too expensive and just not feasible for our clientele. We would typically go for standard cars, Ultimas, Elantras, Chevy Cruises, stuff like that. It's all about knowing your target audience because there's not any point of buying sports cars if your target market is mothers in their 40s with two or more children. You would want to look in the direction of, let's say, large SUVs, uh, minivans or larger sedan. Ideally, you would set up your criteria way before the auction day. And of course, different dealers have different criteria. And most commonly, well, it's a broad criteria. Unless you work for a niche or a luxury dealership, then of course your criteria would be much more narrow. The typical criteria for us would be cars anywhere from maybe 2010 up to about 2018, between 50 and 100,000 miles, and as clean as possible on both paint and upholstery. Now, that is actually a perfect transition over to my next section. This will involve a few departments in the business. First is, of course, your service department. Let's say you have a really small shop. Taking on those big jobs would be increasingly difficult. However, if you have a larger shop or you outsource your mechanic work, well, it might be a little easier to take on. This also expands or narrows your criteria. But if you do see a good car at a good price for a good deal, but it has a potential to have a really bad transmission, well, you never know. You might get a really good deal on it. And that limits the small shops to only take on the small jobs, which limits their amount of money they can possibly make. This also includes paint, upholstery work, and any exterior damage that the car might have. So if a car needs a full lick of paint, well, unfortunately that will cut deep into the dealer's profit. The other department that may need to be consulted is, well, the beating heart of the business the sales team. They can give some quality input as well as having the best idea of your current inventory. For instance, if you're looking to purchase a car and it happens to be salvaged, the sales department may say there's already too many salvaged cars on the lot or the current inventory is already healthy with a lot of those cars that are very similar. So we don't need more cars that are salvaged, especially just the same. And lastly, of course, you have to consult management. In most cases, they will be the ones that control what is bought at the auction anyway. So they always have the final say, you know how it works. <laughs> but inventory control and understanding the work that is needed per car is crucial for a business. It also controls how much you can spend and how much you can bid at auction for these cars. Now that you've decided the level of work you can take on and your criteria, well, it's time for the next step. It's hunting time, ladies and gentlemen. Auctions will put out a list a day or two before the actual bidding will begin. And that looks a little bit something like this. Dealers will hunt through this list looking for the cars that fit their criteria. And just like Amazon, when they find something they like, it's straight into the wish list. After you go through what feels like a million cars, you will create your bulk wish list. This is going to include many, many, many cars. Because remember, at the end of the day, it's a numbers game. If you have too few in your wish list, well, I'm sorry to say, but you're probably not going to have too much luck because these dealer auctions have thousands of dealers across the whole of the United States browsing the same few hundred cars that you are. So having that broad spectrum of your criteria is drastically important. And don't worry, because you won't be bidding on all of these cars. After creating that long list of vehicles, it's time for the tedious part narrowing them down. It's trying to go from about 70 to 100 cars all the way down to 10 or 15 cars. So you have to go through car to car, reviewing all the history reports, you know, car facts, auto check reports, things like that. And you're looking for branded titles, of course, and anything that concerns you. So salvaged, uh, structural damage, 
inner correct odometer, stuff like that. And this will go ahead and actually filter it down pretty quickly because most of these cars you'll find do have some of those branded titles. It's really incredible how much an accident report can actually show you. It also helps you get the best valuation for the car parts because how much you bid is influenced heavily by the history report. Now, this is all online. When you go to an in-person auction, it's a little bit different. An OBD2 scanner is your best friend. It shows you any engine faults or issues with the car that would not be present when driving it. A truly heroic piece of kit for us. Now, we would do a quick inspection when we're actually in the lot, counting the amount of paint is needed, the windows, air conditioning, heater, radios, things like that. Pre-COVID, the auctions were phenomenal. Test drives were absolutely no issue for anyone. However, like most things, it was ruined by the pandemic. Most auctions do not allow you to test drive the vehicles anymore. So bidding is actually a blind man's game. But if they do, they only allow you to go to 40 anyway. And if it's a premium car, like a sports car or, you know, a Hellcat, something like that, well, they don't let you drive it at all. So don't think I just go to the auctions to drive a little Camaro SS. Well, sometimes, but not every time. <laughs> and if my boss is watching, that's just a joke. I promise. All right, crunch time, baby. You've narrowed it down to all the cars that you want. You go through that list and you grab all the VIN numbers and you slap them into KBB. Kelly Blue Book, that means. You check what you're able to sell that car for because obviously buying something for more than you can sell it for, well, that's just business 101, baby. No profit, no punani. Once you find out exactly how much each car can be sold for, it's time to discount all the problems with it. And those discounts include paint, upholstery, cosmetic work, any issues or codes that came up on the OBD2 scanner, transport, and you may even want to go ahead and discount a little bit extra just for the risk back. For instance, if there's any extra fees you might need to pay, well, give yourself a little extra leg room. We are human, don't forget. We do make mistakes, even if it's just a minor error that we might not even see. And after you book and discount all the vehicles, well, you have your maximum amount to bid. And now it is bidding time. The auction will go on pretty much throughout the entirety of the day, but they often do one or two cars at a time. So don't worry, you can have a little cup of tea while you wait. The atmosphere is actually pretty wild. Gibberish is blurted out by both the auctioneers and the bidders and make sure you're paying attention because they will not wait for you. So either have that number written down or have a damn good memory. One important thing you must know is do not bid on the first round of numbers. They will always come down from that number. So be patient they'll go down. <laughs> and as well, bid with your wallet, not with your emotions. Don't go over that max bid just because it's a good deal. Just stay within your price range so you can make the maximum amount of cash possible. And different dealers have different budgets. So if people outbid you, it means they have less room to work with and you know what you can pay for that car. And at the end of the day, it's going to take money away from you. Well, it's not your lucky day today. You didn't win anything. People are going crazy and way overbidding, but it happens more often than you think. So don't get bogged down. It's time to rinse and repeat. And I know that sounds tedious, but I'm making this video for people who have never been to the auctions before, because often dealerships do have de designated people that will go and do that for them. Make sure you're following all the previous steps and then bang, it's time for week two. Woo! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. You won three out of your eight cars. Now it's payment time. Unfortunately, I don't know exactly how you can pay because my wallet, well, that stays in my back pocket. My guess is like credit card or something. You know, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be like Monopoly money. But then again, it could be. <laughs> now you've paid for your cars and it's time to take them back to the, your desired location. Now this process goes one of two ways. Either you grab a couple of team members you go back to the auction, you pick up those cars and you take them back to the lot, or you have them delivered on one of those big ass trucks. And that's what typically happens during an online auction because those cars come from all over the region. And when that truck pulls up, well, it's a pretty exciting day. You get to see the wonderful or not so wonderful car that you've purchased. Then a dedicated team will book the car in, check for any cosmetic damage and order any parts as they see fit. For example, new visors, radios, seats, anything like that. Take that over to the service director and it's time for your mechanical inspection. Don't be fooled because the auctions will announce any major issues with the car, but minor issues that they may have not noticed, well, they often go under the radar. So get that shit repaired. The mechanics will run a full diagnostics check and just to make sure that any issues with the vehicles are seen in broad daylight and then they get ready to go to work. This can either take a hell of a long time or only 20 minutes. 
depends how clean you buy the car. And after the mechanics are finished with it, it's time to take it out for a quick test drive. Make sure that shit runs like brand new. No funky noises or smells that come up on the car, and especially no warning lights because that is the stuff that cost starts costing you a lot of cash. After you've made sure it's up to your standard, well, take that rust bucket and take it over to the paint shop. That faded red paint definitely makes a difference when showing it to customers. Because if you're just your average Joe, well, who buys the cars for the mechanics? Who will buy it for the looks? Whew. Take it like this. Everybody loves a Lambo with a Nissan engine, but nobody likes a Nissan with a Lambo engine. <laughs> after it's looking beautiful after the paint job, it's time to repair that upholstery and take it from that ugly, crumbly cloth seating into a prime, top of the line, well, cloth seating. <laughs> I said repair that upholstery, not replace it. Unless, of course, it needs it. Then replace it, obviously. Make it look like it's got a nice personality and not just a nice smile. And remember those cosmetic issues that you ordered parts for? Well, they arrived. So slap them on the car and it's time for a detail. You never know what those previous owners were doing in that car. Ugh, I don't even want to think about that. <laughs> Get it fully detailed, polish the outside and boom. Just like that, the car looks brand new. Then, I mean, there's not really much left to do. Enjoy having it on the lot, drive it, create content from it, kiss it. Kiss it? What? Who does that? Not me. I do know one chap though. Anyway. Promote the shit out of it. It'll be gone in seconds. But for now, take care and peace.